Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. Uh, I'd like to talk a little today about the things that probably won't go wrong with America, but that in the worst case scenario might take place in a few small towns of America. And so these are things that we should look out for and, and have a plan for in advance. Uh, just in case. That's how I feel. It has to do with social unrest and the economy of the United States. <sighs> There's a chance in the coming years that one of these scenarios might come up. It might be that a town uh, might have a sheriff or a police officer who is in collusion with a crime gang or a mob or mafia, a crime family. And uh, the crime family or crime gang might be producing its own counterfeit United States quote-unquote money. And um, they might be passing it out to the tourists who come into town and laundering it in that way. Or they might be laundering it through the local banks to other parts of the country. Uh, now, if that happens, what we have, if the crime gang controls the town, what we have, as far as I can tell, is secession from the United States. And the reason for that is one of the things that the, the federal government does is provide a currency for all the states in the United States. And so if, if a town chooses to produce its own counterfeit currency, then it, in effect it's setting itself up as a sovereign nation with its own currency trading on the goodwill and the economic success of the larger body, the United States. If that were to happen, I wonder if the Department of Homeland Security would be the place to go to try to get the situation handled. I say that because in a broad sense, the actions of a crime gang town might be considered terrorist actions, I suppose, or secessionist actions, and maybe one of those definitions would be covered by the Department of Homeland Security, which might have enough personnel to take care of it. Um, if the economy is tight here in America, federally, then one way to handle such a situation of a rogue town would be to barricade, to create a state of siege, to barricade the, the incoming and outgoing traffic on the roads to other parts of the country and to prevent air flights from coming in. Uh, the advantage of this would be, with luck, less loss of life than, say, sending in... Uh, a SWAT team or a National Guard or worse yet doing a pinpoint strike. So so that's my idea. It's something simple and if that didn't work after a length of time then then I'd look at more serious action. All right, there's one other thing that I think might happen. And I think, uh, I, in this case, it would be different sort of action that would be taken. It's possible that there may be some small towns coming up where if a person from another part of the country buys real estate there, they may find that if it's a crime town, like the one I described above, they may find that uh, that they're arrested on trumped-up charges by, say, the 
sheriff or police officer who's in league with the crime family and that their only way of uh, getting out of the situation uh, without a prison term or worse yet execution um, would be to give their land to the rogue law enforcement officer uh, for, for a mere dollar, for pittance, for nothing in exchange for a lighter sentence or no death sentence like that or a chance to leave town and never come back again you know like in the old days in the wild west and like that in the days of formation of the country when laws were rather catch as catch can um, so if that were to happen that that anyone's real estate could be seized and sold uh, and they could be imprisoned with no real reason for it, um, then in, in essence, no one could hold property, no one would have property rights in that town, except for the people in the crime gangs. Uh, so, um, so the crime gang could move into any house in town that it wanted to, say, murder the owners and falsify the real estate ownership records showing that they they were the owner, the new owner, and that the house had been sold for a dollar or whatever place it was, like that. All right. Now, what does this mean in terms of the United States and social unrest and secession? To me, it means that the most basic right of American people is being violated. The most basic right of property ownership is being violated. And, and so um, that, that town, that rogue town, has violated the United States Constitution. Again, I feel that this is an act of secession. You could consider it a terrorist act, too. Um, but in this case, what I would do is ask the CIA fact book to list that town as a place that's too dangerous for other Americans from other parts to go to and explain why. And I would ask them to issue an advisory that people should not buy land in that area and explain why. Okay, so um, it would be... It's kind of like it used to be to buy land in Mexico. You couldn't really buy land. You had to go in with a partner who was um, a Mexican national if you were an American, you know. And so it, it might be kind of like that there eventually in places like that. Uh, of course, the other thing that could be done if property rights are constantly violated is simply for the United States government to pro prohibit United States citizens from purchasing land there if they're not, um, you know, natives of the local area. Really, it would be like it was a foreign nation and um, the property rights of the mainland Americans would need to be rewritten in the context of that. That's what I feel. We may experience a, a town or two like that in the coming years since everyone's becoming psi and they're figuring things out. They might even exist right now and they might need a little what for, a little getting in tune with the situation in the rest of America. That's what I think. I would not take this too seriously. I think we can take it in stride. We, we Americans are a strong people and we can take it in stride even if it should happen in the rare instance. Well, enough talking. Y'all take care. Love you lots. Have a wonderful February.